Mother! You've got to go now. I won't be here when you come back. Winston, in fact, you must come back. Mother! Kindness, Winston. Remember to be kind. Embedded in the glass. That's coral, that is, isn't it? It came from the Indian Ocean. It was made over a hundred glasses. It's like rainwater. Paperweight. Come closer. I love you. What? What did you say? Come closer. I love you. 1984 by George Orwell. Dramatised by Jonathan Holloway. With Christopher Eccleston as Winston Smith and Tim Pickett Smith as O'Brien. <laughs> Wake up, Winston. Wake up. <sighs> you were dreaming, twitching and muttering. I was back at the end of the 1950s, during the war. Um, my mother was there. On the day the soldiers came for her and she told me to try and be kind. And then I was trapped inside the paperweight Charrington sold me. Encased in glass, suffocated and fixed, unable to move. Crushed against the piece of pink coral and from inside I could make out a distorted image. Me as a boy standing outside the chestnut tree cafe peering in at something. My mother knew exactly the cold, coarse world the party planned for us all. Her last words have kept me human. What about our love? <sighs> Tell me about the cafe. Oh, it's where party men who'd been denounced went before they disappeared for good. I watched them through the window, staring and crying. <sighs> it's half past 18. We should get dressed soon and go and see O'Brien. What was that? It's only charity. I think you ought to check. Mr. Charrington, is that you? Yes, it's me. Don't worry, they haven't caught us yet. I thought I'd come back and tidy up a bit. You've inspired me to make a little more effort, Mr. Smith. Uh, but don't worry, I'm sure I'll soon get bored and take myself off. I dream about my mother all the time now. I did something that was very wrong. What happened? My father had been taken away and it was just myself, my mother and sister, and she always seemed unwell and clung to my mother like a baby monkey. I stole the food out of her hand. I stood there watching my mother put her arm around my little sister and that gesture told me my sister was dying. Children are cruel. And if they aren't naturally, then the party teaches it to them. I don't want any bloody children. The party tries at every turn to tell us that feelings, impulses, are not worth anything. Hmm. They want us to think everything is pitiful because everything vanishes, so why bother? And of course, that's why they take people often perfectly obedient, good party members. There's no point in relationships because that person can be snatched away. Oh. And they know people need something to believe in. So they give us the traitor Goldstein and the war and Mongol-faced troops who would pull the skin off our backs for fun. A few weeks ago, I walked past the place where a rocket bomb had landed and there was a severed hand lying on the pavement and I kicked it into the gutter like it was a rotten cabbage. We're barely human anymore. Has it occurred to you that the best thing would be to simply walk out of here and never see each other again? I have thought about it, but I'm not going to. We've been lucky, but it can't last much longer. If I confess, they'll shoot you. 
And if I don't confess, they'll shoot you just the same. We shall be utterly without power of any kind. What matters is that we mustn't let them stop us loving each other. That would be the real betrayal. We must stay human, even if it can't do us any good. We can do that. We won't let them inside us. No. Perhaps O'Brien will save us. Let's get dressed and go to see him. Items 1, comma 5, comma 7, approved full wise stop. Suggestion contained item 6, double plus ridiculous virgin crime think cancelled stop. Unproceed construction wise, getting plus full estimates, machinery overheads, stop. End message. You can turn it off. We have that privilege. I had expected you to come alone. This is Julia. We are lovers. And we share the same beliefs. Mm. Well then, shall I say it or will you? Are you sure that thing is really turned off? Yes, everything is turned off. We are alone. We've come here because... Go ahead. We've come here because we believe there is some kind of conspiracy, some kind of secret organisation working against the party and that you are involved in it. We want to join it and work for it. We are enemies of the party. We are also lovers and, as I am still married, adulterers. We have decided to put ourselves at your mercy. Oh, don't be alarmed. Martin is one of us. Let's sit at the table. Martin, will you join us? Certainly. Although I shall have to reply to some messages that have just arrived from your office, a delay would be difficult to explain. Martin and I preserve the established codes for the sake of appearance, although the Brotherhood is democratic. Please, sit down. <clears throat> it's called wine. No doubt you will have read about it in books. Not much of it gets to the outer party, I'm afraid. A toast to our leader, Emmanuel Goldstein. Then there is such a person as Goldstein? Yes, there is such a person. And he is alive. Whereabouts, I do not know. And the conspiracy, the organisation? Is it real? The Brotherhood, we call it. You will never learn much more about the Brotherhood than it exists and that you belong to it. I'll come back to that presently. It is unwise even for members of the inner party to turn off the telescreen for more than half an hour. You ought not to have come here together. It has made you conspicuous. As there is no lawful reason for you to have done so, you will have to leave separately. We have about 20 minutes. I shall have to ask you some questions in order to judge how serious you are. We're capable of anything. Are you prepared to give your lives? Yes. Yes. You are prepared to commit murder? Yes. Yes. To commit acts of sabotage which may cause the death of hundreds of innocent people? Yes. Yes. To betray your country to foreign powers? Yes. yes. If it would serve our interests to throw sulfuric acid into a child's face, would you be prepared to do that? Yes. Yes. Are you prepared to surrender your identity and live the rest of your life as a dock worker or a waiter, much as Martin here has done? Yes. yes. Are you prepared to commit suicide if and when we order you to do so? Yes. Yes. Are you prepared, the two of you, to separate and never see one another again? No. No. You did well to tell me. It's necessary for us to know everything. Julia, do you understand that if he survives, it may be as a different person? His face, his movements, the shape of his hands, the color of his hair, even his voice might be changed. And you yourself might have to be changed beyond recognition by one of our surgeons. Martin's eyelids have been cut to westernize him. Sometimes we even amputate a limb. Good. It's settled, then. 
You'd better go back to the pantry, Martin. I shall switch on in 15 minutes. Please take a good look at their faces. You will be seeing them again. I may not. Goodbye. Well done. You must understand that you will be fighting in the dark. You will receive orders and you will obey them without knowing why. I shall send you a book that will teach you the true nature of the society we live in. Your contacts will change from time to time as the old ones are arrested and killed. I am your first contact and we will continue communication as long as we are able. I will give you orders through Martin, whose role is to protect me from suspicion by sacrificing himself. But we must assume you and I will be caught eventually. When they catch you, you will not be able to betray more than a dozen people. It sounds terribly lonely. It has to be. How shall we know if we're making any difference? You will get no comradeship and no encouragement. But we may have hope, don't you think? No, you shan't have hope. We are the dead. Feels like falling forwards into a damp grave. You must leave first, comrade. How do you stand the loneliness? You just keep going. Look out for chances to pass the news that resistance exists. Let's finish our wine. To the confusion of the thought police. To the death of Big Brother. To humanity. To the future. To the past. Indeed. The past is more important. To the past. I presume you have a hiding place, otherwise how could you talk to each other? An old junk shop run by an elderly fellow called Charrington. Very good. Goodbye, Julia. It's likely we won't see each other face to face again. Goodbye. Winston? He needs to stay for half an hour. Goodbye. See you at the shop. Goodbye, sir. Please, take one of those tablets to suck. You mustn't be caught smelling of wine. Goodbye. Charrington, eh? That's right. We'll have to arrange somewhere new. You can't establish habits. Now, Goldstein's book. Do you carry a briefcase to work? Yes, every day. What's it like? Regulation black, two straps. All right. One day, quite soon, you will receive an instruction at work for a new editing task, and the note will contain a misspelled word. On the following day, you will go to work without your briefcase. At some point in the street, a man will touch you on the arm and say, I think you've dropped your briefcase. The one he gives you will contain a copy of Goldstein's book. It will also contain an instruction describing where you should leave it 14 days later for us to collect. Thank you, it's... What is it? Exciting, I suppose. Hmm. I haven't thought of it like that for a long time. Perhaps too long. Listen. Although you will receive instructions from me, I shall not acknowledge you when we pass at the Ministry of Truth. My messages will come through others. So, shall we actually talk again? Sadly, I think that is inevitable. In the place where there is no darkness. What? It's a phrase my mother used. It's just come back to me. I think she was right. Yes. In the place where there is no darkness. Is there anything you want to ask before you leave? Yes, I have actually, it's silly. Do you know an old rhyme that begins, oranges and lemons say the bells of St. Clemens? You owe me three farthings, say the bells of St. Martin's. When will you pay me? Say the bells of Old Bailey. When I grow rich, say the bells of Shoreditch. Oh, you do know it. I used to know a lot of things that aren't much use to me now. I'm afraid it's time for you to go. Shall we meet, really? 
I'm sure of it. Winston, can you hear me? What's the matter? Nothing's the matter. I've got a surprise for you. Are you in bed? Yes. Oh. What do you think? You look wonderful, beautiful. <laughs> Mr. Charrington found the dress for me. It used to belong to his wife. And there is an old box with the makeup still in it. Oh. oh, don't cry, my darling. This is my treat for you. You look. You look so lovely. <laughs> I'm doing this for you. For both of us. I'm going to do it whenever we meet. Take it off now. Oh. Slowly. Please. Ah, you look wonderful with your painted face. It's the washerwoman in next door's yard, as if she's singing for us. They say the time heals all things. They say you can always forget. But the smiles and the tears across the years, they twist my heartstrings yet. Do you think the book is safe? I don't expect Mr. Charrington will come in and poke around. And... <sighs> Can't imagine him crawling under the bed, lifting floorboards. <laughs> you think it's really worth our lives? Yes, I do. Would you like to read it? I'd like to have sex. Mm. If what O'Brien says is true, then we only have so many times left to us. But the smiles and the tears across the years, they twist my heartstrings yet. I bet she would rather have sex than read. She can't read. Now they're not taught and don't know. <sighs> Should I have a special voice? What? Like priests used to use. <laughs> I don't think you need a special voice. The splitting up of the world into three great superstates was begun in the middle of the 20th century by the land grabs that followed the World War. Oceania is founded on the United States acquisition of Britain and much of its post-imperial commonwealth. Remember to be kind. The Americas, the Remember to be kind. Australia. You owe me ten shillings, say the bells of St. Helens. When will you pay me, say the bells of Old Bailey? Back and forth when all the time. I grow rich, but the war will the never be permitted or shortly. able to take a decisive turn, as peace is not in the interest of the political classes. Julia? Julia, are you awake? Mm, hello. Do you remember the thrush that sang to us that first day at the edge of the wood? He wasn't singing to us. He was singing to please himself. Not even that, he was just singing. The birds sing, the proles sing, and the party doesn't sing. We are the dead. We are the dead. You are the dead! <laughs> <laughs> It was behind the picture. It was behind St. Clement Danes. Get out of the bed! <laughs> no! Don't put your clothes on. Put your hands behind your heads. Stand back to back. They can see us. We can see you. The washerwoman. The house is surrounded. The house is surrounded. Winston? Mr. Charrington, they got you too. I'm so sorry. You might as well say goodbye, Richard. 
Oh, and by the way, it's here comes a candle to light you to bed. Here comes a chopper to chop off your head. Oh. <laughs> right, you bastards. That's it. You make a move, we won't tell you to make it. Get your elbows smashed. <laughs> No one told you to do that. The paperweight was a useful item, a good viewer. Sorry, Pick I... up the pieces, please. And put the little bit of coral on the mantelpiece. Mr. Charrington. I offered you the chance to say goodbye. You chose not to take it. That moment has passed. Mr. Keep quiet now. And yes, you're right. Although you would have been in the company of my kind previously, you won't have known about it. This is indeed the first time you have knowingly been in the presence of an officer of the Thought Police. Oh, oh. Oh. Winston! Silence! Do not speak, or it will be the worst for you. Look, Eric. Look at that one. What about him? He's cacking himself. <laughs> they all cacks themselves. Smith! 6079 Smith W. Take your hands out of your pockets in the cells. Tell her to F off. Go on. Tell her. Go on, Smith. Tell her. He ain't gonna tell her nothing. On account, he's cacking himself. So he should be. That made him look, Des. It gave you look then, all right? You party ones. You get worse than us. We don't care. We ain't never cared. They keep us in here, and they chucks us away when they're ready. Trick is, do a few of the bastards along the way. That's what I say. Do them back. Give it them back. What about old knackers, eh? He's the one who's brought you in here. He don't like your sort. He'll give your elbow a clout with his stick. That's his trick, innit, Des? Crack the bone in your elbow. <laughs> Makes you feel like spewing. He hates your sort. Why should I be afraid? What will they do? Oh, he spoke up, Des. Yeah, maybe if I'm good and I say sorry, they'll be nice and let me go. They'll put bloody wires on you. And he'll scream the place down. Here. You got a girl, Smith. Ha ha ha! He gave you a look then. You got him, Eric. Does your girl love you? Yeah, I reckon she love us and all. It was a knot. We take it, we Eric. <laughs> Parsons. <laughs> what are you in for? <laughs> there is only one offence, isn't there? <laughs> no, I've committed it. You don't think they'll shoot me, do you, old chap? They don't shoot you if you only thought something which you can't help but... <laughs> ah, I'm, I'm, I'm sure the... Fair hearing. Oh, the Ministry of Love. I, I, I trust them completely on that score. They, 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 they know all about my good record. <laughs> Not brainy, of course, but keen. A chap like me could make himself pretty useful in a Labour camp. Are you guilty? No, of course I'm guilty. Don't think the party would arrest an innocent man, do you? I thought crime is a dreadful thing, isn't it? Started talking in my sleep. Down with Big Brother. I said it over and over again, it seems. I, I, I'm glad they got me before I went any further. Thank you. I'm going to say thank you for saving me before it was too late. Who denounced you? How oh, it was my... my little daughter. She was listening at the keyhole. She heard what I was saying and nipped off to the patrols the very next day. I'm grateful to her. It shows up the door around the right way. You'll have to excuse me, old man. It's not as if I've got a choice. I can't, I can't help it. It's, it's the fear, the waiting. Smith! 6079 Smith W. Uncover your face. Uncover your eyes, your nose and your mouth. No covering of faces is allowed in the cells. <sighs> Sorry, old chap, it seems to be broken. I can't, I can't get rid of it. I'm afraid. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm very sorry. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> if ever there was a dirty bastard, deserve what's coming to miss you. 
You fat bloody pig. Out, Parsons! So, where are we going? If I have to come over there to your stink, then I'll bloody well wrap this stick around your head, but so. But room 101, of course. You're gonna get what you deserve. Disgusting. Uh, but please. Right. I warned you. I understand. Understand? Cry, but please. Why would I want it? Not needed. I, I repent. You say who you want me to give away. I've got a wife and two children. You can cut their throats right in front of me. I don't care. Room one or one. Smith, it's him you ought to be taking. You don't know what he's been saying. Something must have gone wrong with the telly screen, so you didn't hear what he said. Take him. Take him, not me. Room one or one. <laughs> Wait and What did you say? His dental plate. It's on the floor. There. Mm. Oh dear. It's broken. He'll have to do without it. Anything more to say? No. I don't think so. Get it! <laughs> They got you too. I'm afraid they got me a long time ago. Winston, please stop deluding yourself. You just wanted to believe it was all possible, didn't you? Yes. <sighs> if I could save Julia by doubling the pain you will inflict on me, then I'd do it. Would you? Really? His elbow, please. I remember. Everything explodes into yellow light. Inconceivable, inconceivable that one blow could cause such pain. Of course, the thing about pain is well, you can only wish one thing that it should stop. In the face of pain, there are no heroes, Winston. Do you know where you are? I don't understand. I told you when we drank wine together that if we ever met again, it would be here, in this place of light, where there is never darkness. We put you to sleep and we moved you. Ah, <laughs> you've seen it. What? This is the machine. You're now connected to it by the copper plate set into the surface of the bench. Um, that's why you're in your pants. Please, no. I don't want you to start up. Please. Oh. Open your eyes and look. There are two controls. This dial determines the amount of electricity delivered by the copper plates. This switch turns the current on and off. I just gave you 40%. Uh, the total is obviously 100%. I'm your interrogator now. And if you tell me any lies, or attempt to prevaricate, pretend you're stupider than I know you to be, then you will instantly cry out in pain. Oh, my back. Yes, I know. You have for many years suffered with back pain. It's a result of poor diet that your vertebrae are decaying, and you're right to worry, because the current forces your muscles into spasm, and there is a danger you may harm yourself, perhaps even 
paralyze yourself if you are difficult or obstinate. Why are you doing this? You don't need to. I'm taking trouble with you, Winston. You are mentally ill. You are unable to remember real things and instead substitute them with deranged images of people and events that do not exist. Let's try an example. Who is Oceania currently at war with? When I was arrested, we were at war with East Asia. East Asia, good. And Oceania has always been at war with East Asia, has it not? I remember that one week before I was arrested, we were not at war with East Asia at all. We were in alliance with them. The war was against Eurasia. That war had lasted for the previous four years before Enough. that. Enough. Let's have another example. Now, some years ago, you had a very serious delusion. I read it in the diary you wrote in your vellum notebook. You saw three ex-party members called Jones, Aronson and Rutherford in the Chestnut Tree Cafe. This shocked you because you believed you had once held in your hand a photograph cut from a newspaper that proved their innocence because they weren't anywhere near the site of their crimes. And this is that very photo. How did you find it? That doesn't matter, because it's going into the memory hole. Ashes. Dust. But it did exist. It does exist. It exists in my memory. I remember it. You remember it. I do not remember it. What does the party say about control of the past? Who controls the past controls the future. Who controls the present controls the past. Yes, who controls the present controls the past. Is it your opinion that the past has a real existence? I'm trying to have a serious conversation with you. You may not be much of a metaphysician, but at least do me the courtesy of trying. Ask the question again. Does the past exist concretely in space? No. Then where does the past exist, if at all? In records, it is written down. In records and... In human memories. Memory. Very well, then. We, the party, control all the records. And so it follows we can control the memories, too. But you can't stop people remembering things. It's involuntary. You have not controlled my memory. On the contrary, you have not controlled your own memory. In our time, here, right now, the only sane mind that exists is the mind of the party. What the party holds to be the truth is the truth. To become sane, I must destroy my memory. Yeah, you wrote in your diary that freedom is the freedom to say that two plus two makes four. Yes, I did. How many fingers am I holding up, Winston? Four. And if the party says it is not four, but five, then how many? Four. That was 55%. How many fingers, Winston? Four. 60, 60. Be careful of your back. How many fingers, Winston? Four. Four. What else can I say? Four! Seventy ah! ah! percent. How many fingers, Winston? Four! Stop it! Stop it! How could you carry on like this? You know there are four! Four! Ah! 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 How many fingers? Five! Five! No, Winston. That's no use. You still think there are four. How many fingers, please? Four! Five! Four! Anything you like! Only stop it! Stop the pain! Oh, you are a slow learner, Winston. How can I help it? Two, two or four! Sometimes they are, Winston. Sometimes they are five. Sometimes they are three. Oh, dear me. It isn't easy to become sane, is it? I'm putting the dial up to 75. I confess, 
I'm concerned about your back. Then don't do it. Again, then? Aren't you going to ask me the question? How many fingers are there, Winston? Four. I, I would see five if I could. I'm trying to see five. No, but which do you wish to achieve? Persuading me that you see five or really seeing them? Really to see them? Then for your sake, I'm going to skip 75% and go straight to 90. No! Do you know where you are, Winston? In the Ministry of Love. Do you know how long you've been here? I think it's months. And why do you imagine that we bring people here? To make them confess. No. To make them sane. What will you do then? We shall, either metaphorically or actually, turn you into gas and pour you into the stratosphere. Nothing will remain of you. Not a memory in a living brain. You will never have existed. In that case, since you intend to destroy me utterly, why go to all the trouble of interrogating me or trying to make me sane? Our rule must be absolute, and we must erase any resistance. We cannot tolerate dissent anywhere in the world, however secret and powerless it may be. Now, you have to understand, we are bringing human social evolution to an absolute stop. We shall not be one of the many civilizations that have risen and fallen throughout history. We are permanent. We will make your brain perfect before we blow it out of your head. We must squeeze you empty, then fill you with ourselves. What are those? I would have preferred, and we always prefer, to change the whole person rather than take cheap shortcuts. But you are hard work, Winston. These will modify you, taking away a little part of you, but perhaps making you happier or rather content with what is happening. Uh, this won't hurt. It will actually make you feel better. Now, um, lie down. Now, just bite on this piece of leather, will you? Yeah. <laughs> Are you back, Winston? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Don't worry. Perhaps it feels as if everything is almost the same, but some part of you has been taken away. You can't quite tell which, but um, you feel its absence. Perhaps. What country is Oceania at war with? I don't remember. Oceania is at war with East Asia. Do you remember that now? Yes. Oceania has always been at war with East Asia. Do you remember that? Yes. I am holding up my hand. There are five fingers. Do you see five fingers? Yes, I do. My hand is not deformed, is it? No. Today, it just happens to have five fingers and a thumb. Yes? Yes. And so you can see what I've been discussing with you all these weeks is, in fact, possible. I can. I enjoy talking to you, Winston. Now, before we bring today's session to a close, I'm going to let you ask me whatever questions you like. Really? Any question I like? Anything. What have you done with Julia? She betrayed you, Winston. Immediately and unreservedly. I've seldom seen anyone come over to us so quickly. All her rebelliousness, her dirty-mindedness, everything has been burned out of her. It was a perfect conversion. When you said she betrayed me, what do you mean? Next question. Did you torture her? Next question. Does Big Brother exist? 
Of course, the party exists, so Big Brother exists. Does he exist in the same way I exist? You do not exist. I exist. I was born and I shall die. I occupy a particular point in space. It is of no importance. He exists. Does the Brotherhood, Goldstein's anti-Inksock Brotherhood, exist? You shall never know. Even if we let you live until you're 90, you shall never know. If Goldstein does not exist, and if you were always intent upon arresting me and curing me... Yes. Why go to all the trouble of writing and printing Goldstein's book with all its thousands of words? I actually wrote it. That is to say, I collaborated on writing it. As you know, we do not produce books as individuals anymore. And its purpose, its supposed credible program for undermining Ingsoc and its fantasy about proletarian revolution, that's all intended to give you hope for a secret accumulation of knowledge, for an enlightenment, for the illumination of the people and their eventual overthrow of the party. It aims to give hope and draw moths to its flame. Before the party, there was nothing. Outside man, there is nothing. What about the stars? Small crucibles of fire a few kilometers above. They don't deserve our attention. The heavens are only of interest for their function as a navigational aid. But even to navigate by them, we must know their motions, distances, behaviors. How can human beings become so involved with their workings and at the same time think of the universe as a meaningless jumble of marks in the sky? Your thought crimes are directly related to your refusal to accept the sublime release provided by Doublethink which allows a human being to seek to know only that which is useful and nothing more. Ignorance is necessary, it's wonderful, powerful. It is the bulwark of doublethink, and behind it all sits violence. Violence is the key. If you want a picture of the future, imagine a boot stamping on a human face forever. Sooner or later, the population will see you for what you are, and they will tear you to pieces. By changing the language, we narrow thought. Within a few years, the population will be unable even to consider change. They literally won't have a word for it. What's in room 101? You know what's in room 101, Winston. Everyone knows what's in room 101. I have not betrayed Julia. Oh, no, no, that's perfectly true. You have not betrayed Julia. When will I be shot? It might be a long time. You're a difficult case. But don't give up hope. Everyone is cured sooner or later. In the end, we shall shoot you. Oh, you look much better. Fatter, stronger. Incarceration is doing you good. Um, how's the uh, the ulcer on your leg? Better. And uh, your teeth? Uh, they said they'd pulled them all out and given you dentures. Yes, they feel good. Thank you. And thank you for the slate and the chalk. Yes, you've been writing. Could I have paper? Uh, no. The slate can be wiped once you've filled it. That's good because it has no memory. Paper, on the other hand. I understand. I hear you've been sleeping quite well. Will there be a time when the light will be turned off? Not in here, I'm afraid. <laughs> what do you dream about? A golden country, enormous sunlit ruins, with my mother, with Julia, with you. <laughs> what do we get up to in your dreams? We talk of peaceful things. Is there something you want to say to me? I've missed you. And? I have accepted everything. Go on. The past is alterable, but the past has never been altered. Oceania has always been at war with East Asia. Mm. Jones, Aronson and Rutherford were guilty of the crimes with which they were charged. <laughs> there never was a photograph that disproved their guilt. Yeah, and how do you feel? I hardly know why I ever rebelled. 
If I said to you that by a simple act of will I could float off this floor and up into the air like a soap bubble, would you agree that is true? Of course. Tell me more, Winston. Uh, it's obvious. That if I say I can float in the air, then I can? Yes. If you think you can float off the floor, if I think I see you do it, then the thing happens. Ah. I see. What's the matter? You are assuming there is still a real world where I didn't float off the floor at all, a world of so-called facts. You imply there is a space between believing what you are told to believe and knowing it actually isn't true. I don't think that's a problem. Don't you? No. Because sometimes with you I feel like I'm teaching a child. You're an intelligent man. Why doesn't your mind work more deftly? Everyone's sane understands they can believe conflicting things simultaneously because conflicting things can simultaneously be true. Double think, Winston, double think. We invented it so that people can remain sane. As part of this, one's mind has to learn the ability to stop dangerous thoughts instinctively, ban them. That's what crime stop means. But I suppose we're getting there. We must both be patient. I'm sorry. I am trying. Well, tell me more about your dreams. Are there ever anxieties in them? I think about Julia. Of course you do, but don't worry, that will stop. I don't want it to. Really? Why not? Because I am convinced that somewhere she is suffering, that she is alive and needs my help. I remember the texture of her skin. In my dream, she has an overwhelming presence, more real than waking life. Get up. Look at my face, Winston. You have been deceiving me. Stand up straighter, look me in the face. You are improving intellectually. There's very little wrong with you. Tell me, Winston, and remember, no lies. You know I can tell when you're lying. Tell me, what are your true feelings towards Big Brother? I hate him. You hate him? Good. You were very weak, and I was afraid we might kill you. You are stronger now, strong enough for what's necessary. The time has come for you to take the last step. You must love Big Brother. It is not enough to obey him. You must love him. Guards, take him to room 101. <laughs> When you asked what room 101 was, there was no need for me to explain because you already knew perfectly well. Everyone knows what room 101 is. They know from the nature of the title and from the phrasing, the way it's spoken. Room 101 is the worst thing in the world. When you were a child and we took your mother and your sister, and you came back to that flat. You didn't know what to do. You were there, I believe, for at least a fortnight. That's what your file says. A fortnight alone and starving. And you fell asleep. And when they found you, the rats had nibbled your ears and your fingers. Do you remember that? No. You're making it up. What do you think about rats? I hate them. I stay away from them. <laughs> Which is difficult in London, where they're certainly more numerous than people. None of this is necessary. What do you want me to do? Well, sometimes pain is not enough. Sometimes we must subject a person to something so horrible that they cannot resist and will surrender by instinct. And, uh, this 
cage surrounds your head and can be secured around the neck. There is, as you can see, an oblong box attached opposite your face. It has two sliding doors in it. These can allow a creature, a spider, a snake, or whatever, to progress steadily towards your face. As the doors slide open, it gets closer until finally, well, you understand the rest. I'm not afraid of anything like that. I don't mind creatures. Nurse. Thank you, nurse. Would you, uh, please? What use could I be with my face eaten off? Well, you aren't any use now, are you? This is a last effort to save you from insanity, Winston. A last effort at curing you. If the animals do get to your face, it'll be because we have failed, and there would be no point in keeping you alive any longer. In some parts of the proletarian quarter, women dare not leave a baby alone in a room for more than a few minutes. Rats are carnivorous and voracious when confident or angry. I have pressed the first lever. Julia, 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 mother, mother, Julia, Julia. There is now only one door between the rats and your face. They will first attack those parts they can easily bite, extremities and edges, your nostrils, ears, eyelids, lips. Then they will work into the soft parts of your mouth and cheeks. <laughs> Although it's repulsive to us, the rats will not be deterred by the smell of your vomit. They are foragers too, and it will excite them all the more, Winston. Mother, Julia, 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 Julia! My hand is on the final lever now. The rats have smelt you. They are ready for you, Winston. No! Do it to Julia! Do it to Julia, not me! Julia! I don't care what you do to her! Tear her face off! Give her to the bone! Not me, Julia! Not me! Oh, Welcome to the Chestnut Tree Cafe. Gin? Would you like essence of cloves in it? It's a speciality. You haven't tried it. Can I sit? Well, I will do anyway. Cool. I saw you through the window. Listen. I just want to say something. In case we run into each other again. Chess? Who are you playing? Myself. Listen. I want to be clear. You're not to come near me. I betrayed you. I betrayed you too. Sometimes they threaten you with something you can't stand up to. Can't even think about letting them do to you. And then you say, don't do it to me, do it to someone else, do it to him. And I said that because they helped me understand how selfish you really are. How you only cared about yourself all along. If you cared about me, then you wouldn't have let any of it happen. All you care about is yourself. And after they've made you realise, then you can't feel the same about that other person. You. Anymore. Anyway, I have to get to the tube station. What's that? What? You've written something with the gin with your finger on the table. Have I? Look for yourself. 
2 plus 2 equals... What? What does it equal? I don't know, do you? I don't understand. It's good to see you. We must do it again. I have to go. Goodbye. Bye. Under the spreading chestnut tree, we lay together, you and me. We were as happy as could be under the spreading chestnut tree. In 1984, by George Orwell, Winston Smith was played by Christopher Eccleston, O'Brien by Tim Pickett Smith, Julia by Pippa Nixon, Charrington by Robert Blythe, and Parsons by Kim Wall. Other parts were played by Christine Absalom, Sam Alexander, Don Gillet, Susie Riddell, and Joe Sims. 1984 was dramatised by Jonathan Holloway and directed by Jeremy Mortimer. Our drama next week is a reimagining of the short story The Lady in the House of Love and the 1976 radio play Vampirella. This time round, the story stars Anna Massey as the last in line of Dracula's undead on the eve of the First World War.